This week's podcast, I'm really excited about this one. We're going to talk about the corporate athlete with me, Harriet Walker, dietitian. Hello, Greg. That was very straight up. <laughs> Normally you say something way more intelligent. Anyway, corporate athletes. What's a corporate athlete before we start, just so people know where we're at? We're drawing some parallels between the characteristics of an athlete and what's required to ace it in the corporate world. So there is definitely some parallels and Let's we're going to discuss them. build some hustle with a dietitian. Yeah. Bring it. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Today's podcast is brought to you by the new Clean Coffee TX100. It's coffee done smarter, supercharged with brain, mood, metabolism, performance, and gut-boosting ingredients. We've combined the incredibly smooth taste of Colombian single-origin coffee with MCTs, apple cider vinegar, and Blue Ness, the ultimate stress-relieving herb. It's keto and vegan-friendly, gluten-free, with no added sugars or artificial sweeteners. Enjoy hot or cold and take your coffee to the next level. Welcome to Body Science HQ. This week, I have with me Harriet Walker, our favourite dietitian. Thank you. I'll take that. Okay, talking about the corporate athlete, and we're talking about the the person on the hustle, doing the big hours, the long days, driving teams, captaining their world. So let's step that back first to you're a sports dietitian, some mm-hmm. athlete traits. Obviously, there'll be a new category of dietitian after this podcast called the, because you've got dietitians, sports dietitians, soon yeah. there'll be corporate dietitians. Corporate athlete dietitian. There I already like are corporate dietitians. There's definitely people who specialise in the corporate space. Yeah. Okay. Me being one of them. You, you're one of them, are you? Mm-hmm. How do we find you, Harriet? You can go to my highly influential Instagram page, which is at athletic eating and athleticeating.com.au. Yeah, nice. So athlete traits, let's go. So, I mean, look, when we're looking at athlete, power, endurance, agility, are a couple of the really big traits that they need to have to become successful. Yep. We could parallel the that. athletic part of it. The athletic part of it, yes. absolutely. We could parallel that mm-hmm. in the corporate world. So obviously influence is one, power, endurance, being able to do the long hours, um, agility, being able to change direction quickly, not necessarily in a physical sense, yep. but definitely meeting to meeting, person meeting to person, meeting, person to person. Yeah. If you know something pops up, we need to be able to change tact really quickly. The thing is with athletes is we train a lot. You know, you train, you don't, you're practicing a lot. Very commonly in, you know, our worlds, we don't get to practice stuff much before we actually have to do it. We, yeah. we are more about application and delivery than we are about practice. And in the same context, you know, we might have an athlete who's got like a training program and there's deliberate rest. There's there's times where stress is high, but then we also, you know, expect that there needs to be downtime in order to make the most of the adaptations from that training session or from that training block. These days, I having worked with a lot of people in the corporate setting, they've got the very high demands, you know, psychologically, cognitively, and less so physically, but it is a demand on the body to do a, a job where there's lots of you know responsibilities and there's travel involved, whatnot. Yet we don't get the same scheduled downtime. We don't allow ourselves to have you know the, the nutrition isn't on point. You know you're you're not consuming a healthy, balanced diet in order to fuel your training session. Coffee. It's I'm you know I might have breakfast on the fly at the cafe underneath my office or I might not be thinking about eating food until lunchtime by which time my blood sugar levels are so low that I'm just you know consuming whatever's close by and that you know you can get away with those habits those health habits for a certain amount of time you know there's definitely something to be said for the people who have you know maybe been an athlete in the past who work in the corporate setting and can bring across some of those traits and I know you know where my clients are concerned when they've got a boss or a superior or a management or themselves are in that management position and they are able to you know take the time to recover eat well go to you know go to the gym maybe not necessarily always at lunchtime but you know fairly regularly that's highlighted as being a positive thing that they're actually more productive they're more focused their outputs are better and they're less burnout and that's what we're really speaking about here is you know getting those health parameters in check in order to actually get more out of your work day. So it's working smarter, not necessarily always harder. I find with people when they're in good health, you know, like I said, there's that focus and there's that increased productivity. The endorphins involved with, you know, exercise are really fantastic for that creative thinking and for those cognitive outputs that you need in the corporate setting. But when we're not doing that, there's a 
increased amount of that presenteeism or uh, the what sorry presenteeism so basically you've got absenteeism when people don't come to work but then we've also got this other aspect which is presenteeism when we're at work but we're not actually there mentally we're physically there but we're not mentally there and that's actually a really big financial burden on businesses when people Massive. are at work but they're only working at 30 40 50 percent capacity because they're tired they're stressed they're burnt out and they're not engaged with their work and a large part of that can come down to the you know health status of the employee. So, you know, when we look at athletes and corporate, it might straight off the bat not seem like, you know, what a, a similar scenario. But actually, if we could get people thinking about staff or management teams or themselves in terms of being more athletic in their approach to their day, their exercise, we, we see a crossover in terms of productivity outputs, cognitive function, focus, endurance, and that always yields better outcomes. Yeah, nice. So, Harry, let's just talk about that corporate athlete. Like, um, and I'll talk about myself for a second. Like, I'm 50. Mm -hmm. Body science is 20 years old. I started body science 20 You've years ago. you hustling before hustling was cool, man. Yeah, um, protein wasn't even cool when I started. Looking at that corporate athlete, let's talk that 35 plus, 45 plus, 55 plus. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting older and fitter. Like, there's a lot of people at my age that are training every day and really pushing the limits. And if you look at the big data, it really is a growth area. Absolutely um, is. In that health and fitness. So, that corporate athlete, what are some of the complaints that you're getting across your desk as a dietitian in relation to, when I come to work, I want to be the best I can be for the people around me, mm -hmm. my clients, our customers. So I'm hit up all day long from the minute I walk in to the minute I leave. Hey, Greg. Hey, Greg. Hey, Greg. All day long. Mm -hmm. So for me, I assume that would be the same as taking some tackles up occasionally in a football field for a game or whatever it is for an athlete. How do I act as a corporate athlete and what things are you hearing from people to say they can't act like a corporate athlete? I think the biggest one where there's a difference is the stress. Yep. So in sport, in exercise, stress is acute. Like it's a short-term stimulus. It's supposed to be good for you. It's a positive thing. A little bit of stress is good for you. However, in the corporate setting and not even in corporate setting, just day-to-day -day people, stress is really running high. There's not that ability to recover because we can, you know, we can build resilience to stress and enjoy it. You yeah. know, you talk to some of the people who are high up in sport and it's that clutch moment that, you know, I'm ready to go, I'm heightened and that stress is really positive. But we we don't have the ability to recover from stress, then, you know, it does become a an issue that Im impacts your ability to make decisions and to handle things. We become less resilient as a result of chronic stress. You know, people are more sedentary. You know, we're sitting down, obviously, an athlete, they're able to get around, they're moving all the time. When we're in the corporate setting, there's a lot of sitting down. You yeah. know, we can make the, the bid to do more walking meetings and whatnot. But at the end of the day, unless you're looking for opportunities to get your steps up, it can be really difficult if you're quite busy. You know, the poor food habits. So I know in offices, I've been to some places where there's actually a dedicated food table. You know, we're stressed, we're busy, stuff is going on all the time. Very commonly, food is a Band-Aid. You know, people will bring food to make themselves feel better. Or if you're a manager and, you know, you know it's going to be crunch time, bring in some, you know, sweet foods or chocolates or lollies to make people food. more building. Well, when you're charging six minute increments like a solicitor or an accountant, you want to keep people at the Don't desk. Along. Yeah, like absolutely. So if you, they can reach out and get their food, it's it's happy days. I would argue It's not happy days actually, is it? No, it's, it, well, it's not. I would argue yeah. that there is a difference between being busy and being productive and yeah. when we are fueled well, our brain benefits from that too and we're actually more clear in our thinking. So reviewing the food choices that are around the desk, <laughs> that are around the office, you know, these are big things that make a really big difference into people's choices day to day. And that's part of that fast pace, no downtime lifestyle. It's, and especially like, I don't know if a lot of people know, but solicitors and accountants do charge by six minutes. Like Absolutely. It's, They're time blocking. Yeah. Some of the most stressed people in the world, yet some of the most intelligent people and some making some of the biggest decisions in the world, you really need to stop and have that downtime and manage that. Absolutely you do. Yeah. Absolutely you do. I mean, and then there's drinking, there's alcohol. So alcohol becomes one of those things that people fall back on. I'm so stressed. I need a glass of wine at the end of the day. And that's how they wind down. Yeah. And look, every now and then, like I say, you know, it's fine. But if that becomes your daily reflex is to go for the bottle of wine, which, you know, I have a lot of conversations with people, quite, you know, frank conversations, and that's something that really impacts their day. So what are you doing there? You're just you're saying, well, stop having three, have one, or are you saying- Look, long term, that's Do something different? But we need to really break the circuit there a little bit. So it's all well and good for me to say, I'll oh, stop drinking wine. Yeah. But there's a reason why they're doing it. 
doesn't really work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We need to be looking at long-term stress management and that doesn't always include nutrition, doesn't always include training. In some cases, that's just, you know, your mindfulness, meditation, having a chat to somebody about it. Nootropics. I'm just going to drop that in there. Hashtag. I do make supplements though. Supplements. Hashtag yeah, nootropics. I love my nootropics, sorry. You know, and their, their ability to manage your own stress <clears throat> feeds into the food choices that you make, feeds into, you know, drinking as a thing of enjoyment versus drinking as a thing that you know you need to do to unwind we talk about you know you, you, you sort of you're setting up a, a, a scenario here where there's like no off season no you now when you play you play football you have a pre-season you have a you have an end of season yep but when you're a corporate executive you're on every day bar that four weeks you take annually in australia where you take four weeks holiday it's and even that you spend the first two worrying about what you're doing because you've left work yep so it is it is a tough gig being a corporate athlete so physical capabilities are stressed to the max for a corporate athlete. yeah absolutely we don't have that ability to you know recover from what's happen before the next thing lands on your desk and yeah. and over a matter of months years that can really impact long-term health outcomes for people like i know my my dad was a lawyer and definitely a high stressed job you know it's not just nine to five you're sitting on boards and there's meetings and high profile cases and you know that really took a toll on his health and then you know there's the the meetings and the the lunches and the dinners that you have to go to and it's really hard to dodge unless you've got somebody obviously you know getting that professional help is really important but also you know your work environment is supporting you and being healthier and I think there's a really big trend and there needs to be a bigger trend in terms of supporting people in their workplace to be able to make healthier choices. I know there's some people really working and when we've been talking to them a lot in setting some programs up ourselves along the lines of you know like, like Dr. Craig Duncan from the Socceroos mm-hmm. doing massive things in that corporate yeah, world in relation to self-science. Now you're doing a lot yourself like you said in that corporate world as well and you, you've you come on board with us to do a lot in that corporate world as well because yep, I, I think I'm a massive fan of the corporate athlete. So Harriet, like one of the big things when we talk to corporates is they want to start with diet. The foundation is how do I get fitter? How do I lose a few kilos? How do I, what do I eat to stop stress? How would I eat for energy? It's all that type of thing you get asked. So how does a healthy body impact a corporate athlete and how can they play harder? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good question. So I think we need to look at the first place I I start with people is looking at the snacking behaviours. When it comes to diet overhaul, it can be a little bit Do you put coffees into that snacking thing? Because I know when I'm under the pump and I'm like, oh, God, I just got to stop for a second. I'm going to get a coffee. Whether I want a coffee or not, yep. I'm a hit the caffeine and, you know, I probably have a little chat while I'm there. So it's a good downtime yeah, for me. And, and for some people, that's getting up out of the chair and going for a walk yeah. somewhere. You know, obviously smoking's not I'd a, like a coffee right now, actually, if someone's listening. If but yeah. anyone downstairs, no. Yeah. Um, so, you know, smoking used to be a really common way to break up your day and obviously the health impacts of that are very well known now unless people are doing it which is fantastic but it does has reduced our opportunities to get up and leave for any reason but coffee can definitely play into this obviously like we've spoken about before there's a benefit to coffee you know it can be a little bit of a pet me up it can have those antioxidant effects we can which can help counter a bit of that stress you know get your clean coffee with body science which has got the blueness in it which which yeah. has been shown to increase um, you know, cognitive function and feelings of calmness, which is fantastic, but not everyone's having that. They're probably relying on caffeine too much. I'd be looking at sleep patterns with that as well, impacting their body's ability to relax when we're having too much caffeine that plays into it in a really large way. But then it's also what goes into the coffee as well. But coffee aside, snacking is a big a big aspect to a lot of offices. We spoke about it, you know, the biscuit jars, the lolly jars to make people feel good. If we could swap muffins muffins yeah. cake what about tables fruit trays of you know they're no, dietitian we're gonna love the fruit we're gonna love the fruit the fruit tray up should i no look i no. like i said you can't binge on fruit i've tried it gets boring after the second piece of fruit yep but snacking is a really good place to start for workplaces because a lot of the snack foods that people are consuming in the workplace are their crappier choices historically and you know research has indicated this as well so if we could focus in on one small aspect of improvement improving the diet and we know that when we are consuming good food our brain is benefiting from that as well the micronutrients that are in foods the vitamins and minerals they're not just there you know 
to help keep us healthy, they are, but they're also involved in a lot of the chemical reactions associated with cognitive function. So we know that when we're not consuming adequate amounts of those vitamins and minerals we get from fresh, healthy food, it's going to be impacting our cognitive function. You might not feel it straight away, but over the course of a few years, there's definitely going to be a bit of rundown there in terms of how quickly and how well our brain is functioning. Okay. So optimizing the diet in that respect is a really good way of thinking about it beyond just, oh, you know, eat more vegetables. It's why. It's the vitamins and minerals in those vegetables and fruits and, you know, the healthy foods that we consume, meats, nuts, seeds, dairy, all those things contribute the micronutrients, which we forget about quite a bit. That That's impact. why I take a multivitamin though. There we go. But yeah. you know what? That might be valid if you are somebody who is busy, who has, who does I push still, their body. I'm still like the, the trying to eat. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we chat you know, a lot about what to eat, and I really take that on board. Except, you know, you're not a keto fan. I am, but yeah, things like multivitamins and that to me in that corporate world are their insurance policy. They're not the answer. I'm no. not saying they're the answer, but I'm no. definitely saying they're part of my. Yeah, and it's the same with athletes. You know, when they're pushing their bodies to that extent, there is an increased requirement for nutrients. Mm. No one's denying that. And if you know, as an interim, before you know, whilst you're getting your diet under wraps, and if a multivitamin is something that can help you, then there's no, you know no worries there. It's an yeah. insurance policy, as you said. So, so one of the first things is as I look at people's snacks, we want to crowd out those sugary snacks. We want to try and get rid or phase out. I don't know how you do it. Well, I do know how, phasing it out is a really good uh, approach. We want to make sure that we have those fresh foods conveniently placed. So instead of having the top drawer full of, full of sugary or chocolate or you know chips or whatever, replace it with some options like you know like a trail mix with a bit of dark chocolate and some healthy nuts. We might have you know a protein a, a bar. blender bar. Smoothie bar, yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you might have smoothies options there ready for your staff. Bit of protein in there, some fruit. Yep, absolutely. And again, the protein bar is something that's a really nice swap. So, you know, even like your, your low carb body science protein bars are a fantastic transition. Get them everywhere, kids, Coles, Woolies, everywhere. If you see them on sale, obviously a public yeah. service announcement yeah. is always warranted. You can get them at our favorite health food stores too. But I mean, that they're a great option. And if you're trying to phase out that 3 p.m. chocolate bar, you know, it, it kind of it's feels a good like swap. a chocolate bar it's got that protein yeah. intake you're going to be less likely to be reaching for the sugary stuff and we're talking that. snacking here we're not talking swapping meals no absolutely mm. not you know we want to make sure that those healthy options are the easy option to make and snacking in the workplace is do you one. find that the snacking thing sometimes can be people are actually thirsty yeah oh look i'm not sh- i think very commonly people can do well to increase their water intake yeah. regardless and we've spoken about before consuming water can help increase levels of satiety especially leading into meals. And so if I'm a corporate athlete and I'm having two or three cups of coffee a day, is that part of my water intake? Absolutely. If it's if it's black coffee, I yeah. mean, obviously there's a water component to milk as well. It does count towards your fluid intake and fluids are... Maybe you still want us drinking clean, clear water. Water. Absolutely. If water's not your jam, and I know for many people it isn't, we can look at adding adding in like your lemon juices or your clean teas. Yeah, or your, your clean teas are good options actually. Yeah, well, yeah, green teas is nothing we do. Yeah. You know, they all low you know, calorie and add no sugar. Work with what you, you got yeah. or what you like. Well, that's and how if, Gatorade came about, didn't it? Yep, absolutely. They added Gatorade. They added the bit elements of, f- of Gatorade to water to my, Make yep. athletes drink. Bit of sodium, bit yeah. of sugar and happy days we want to drink more. So I think a part of increasing your water intake, you know, obviously increases satiety. Not everyone likes drinking large amounts of water. I see really commonly. So it's getting people to look at different ways of making it more appealing for themselves. Yeah. So and we know in sport, cognitive function is impaired. So brain function, you're thinking, being able to shoot accurately, being able to make quick decisions is impaired when we're dehydrated. So as little as two percent dehydrated which could be oh, like... Oh, bring, bring on the sports dietitian. Here we go. You know, I might, didn't mean to stop you then. You're on a roll. I'm on a roll, man. 2%. 2% dehydration can impair your ability to execute those skills. And if we think if that's an athlete, in the corporate setting, the same thing is going to be occurring if we're dehydrated, you know, ability to make quick decisions or rational decisions. I mean, obviously... And be a good boss, be a good human. You know, that could be a factor in, you know, if we're looking for those little 1%, 2% as like we do in sport, if we're looking at... The same aspect in a corporate setting, one, two percenters, increasing your hydration is an easy one to do. Having a water bottle at your desk is simple and it's a you know a reminder to be doing it on the reg. And you can also take home a better version of yourself that night too. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Like, you know, if you're that 2% dehydrated, like you just said, you're not taking your best version home. Well, and absolutely. Like, I think it's a matter of what you do at work and how you manage yourself at home. You know, it's a, re- it's a really common thing in terms of leadership and management mm. of bringing your best person to workplace and also finding that best person to take to be at home and be present with your family as well. It's it's yeah, exactly. one of the sort of Why pillars of leadership and management is yeah. being able to manage yourself. Yep. No, be aware of you know what state you're bringing into the room. So obviously, long term dress, high level snacking, it's going to lead to some type of immune issue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When we're not consuming the right foods on a regular basis, when you know stress is chronic, we see lower immune function. You know, the vitamins and minerals and the macronutrients we get from food are uh, play a role in our immune function. And when we're not not managing our stress, when we're not sleeping properly when we're pushing ourselves too far, you know, the old burning the candle at both ends, we do see lowered immune function. For athletes, we are looking at how we can reduce downtime. You know, obviously for every training session that you miss due to illness is an opportunity to adapt to get fitter, faster, stronger. Same thing goes for the corporate setting. If we are not managing, yeah, Mm. you're missing out on your billables, guys. When we're not managing our immune function, which is impaired by chronic stress, which is impaired by not eating properly, not sleeping well, we're going to be putting ourselves at risk of that burnout of those being more susceptible to those colds and flus that we get throughout the year. And again, it's false economy, I find that if you know, you're like, oh, I'm just going to push through a little bit harder. Or I'm just going to, you know, I'm not listening to my body and I'm going to keep going where I probably should make a more mindful choice of pulling up earlier. So we want to be able to manage the immune function by you know, looking at the same things that we're looking at in athletes. We want to be able to manage sleep, increase the nutrient intake of the diet, making sure that stress is managed. And that means we have less downtime. We're not burning the candles at both ends and we're turning up to work ready to go. You know, false economy is trying to do everything all at once and not being patient. And I think management and leadership are looking at it more in this direction now. The people who are really highly effective are the ones who are exercising in their lunch break, who are bringing good food to work and they can feel it in their own bodies. And once they can feel that, they can be passing that on to their own staff as well. So you mentioned bringing food to work. So corporate athlete has to food plan as well? Look, this is the one thing when people get really busy, food prep often gets thrown out the window. You know, I travel quite a bit for work. And the one thing that I look for is I actually outsource quite a bit of my food prep on the regular I know what to look for so when I'm traveling and I don't have time I might get home and you know on a Sunday night and have nothing ready for the week I will start ordering in there's a lot of really fantastic food preparation companies where you know it's as good as if I'd made it okay most cases better unfortunately I hate to admit it but I'm outsourcing because obviously to increase your work capacity you got to outsource some stuff food prep is one of those ones people do struggle it might be a bit hit and miss so one thing is outsourcing Sourcing. The other thing is looking what's around your environment. So I often encourage my clients to look at figuring out their plan B. So if they don't, obviously plan A will be to make your own lunch. You might make double dinner and then package it up for the next day. But if that doesn't happen, you might have left it at home and that becomes an excuse to you know go for the easy option. But instead of going from plan A to plan Z, I want people to go from plan A to plan B, which is what is in your immediate environment that is a better option than the burger and chips that you might have as a default, which is really common. People will just want to grab something. Mood food. Mood food. Yeah. Like it's delicious at the time, but afterwards you're like, oh, I'm in. I'm stressed. If I'm actually going to stop right now, I'm going to have a burger and chips. Yeah, I'm going to make myself feel better. We wanted to, you know, delay a bit of delayed gratification is, mm-hmm. you know, is where it's at. Having a plan in advance really helps reduce the risk of falling back onto those convenience foods. So I'll get people to look, okay, what's the healthier options in your area? You know, there might be a salad bar, there might be a cafe that can do you some special you know, some Uber Eats meals. Options. Yeah, there's absolutely. There's heaps of options out there. And then we could be looking at, you know, the convenience foods in your supermarkets these days. And there's a lot of ready to go meals that are much healthier than they have been in the past. And they're, they're all options that we could be. So what type of macro breakup should I be looking for in a meal? Like uh, one of these, I've gone running past Coles and Woolies. I'm mm-hmm. grabbing one of those meals out the front. They have it very easy to grab these days. Yep. What should I be looking for as far as macro- macros go? 
Absolutely. So, I mean, I would be working off the sim. I, I've, you know, I've spoken about this quite a lot before. Vegetables in those meals are normally a little bit smaller than what I would like. However, they're better than nothing. So, generally, they will have a portion of vegetables there. I would be looking at a, a source of protein and carbs and healthy fat. So yeah. I think those meals are catering for the people we're talking about. I don't think that they have happened by accident and I, I'm pretty sure that the major supermarkets are across what the healthy options are. And I think in many cases they probably have a dietitian behind the construction of those meals, which is fantastic. So I would be just making sure there's a serve so of veggies if, if, in if there. I'm a, if I'm a busy solicitor or accountant, I should just on the weekly shop buy five of them, six or seven, have them in the fridge. Yeah. Can you put a few in the fridge? Absolutely. And, you know, maybe grab a few other little vegetables around the side that you can throw on top in the microwave. Yeah. Like some extra. Those frozen veggie bags are an absolute godsend just for bumping up your vegetables. And let's talk about that. Like frozen veggies normally are fresh that are frozen straight away. Yeah, they're frozen. So they're not the poor man's version of a good vegetable. Absolutely not. No. In many, well, you know, most cases they're equal nutrition value. In some cases, if the vegetable's been sitting on the shelf for a little bit while, while, for a little while, and is looking a bit limp, chances are it's probably got a higher nutrient intake. So, you know, at the very least, you could grab a microwave rice cup. You could grab some microwave veggies and find yourself a tin of tuna or something like that. You know, there are some really simple options before we have to lean back on. There are also things you don't need to keep cold like tuna and that too. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, utilize your work environment as well. So if, if, if it's easier for you to take some materials into work at the start of the week, you might take some wraps in a salad bag, some tins of tuna, some grated cheese or something like that and have something ready to go to throw together. So you can always do it if you need to. You can always do it. I know we went and we did a corporate day not long ago and you created the buddy system. Yeah. So you had people buddying up on meals and foods so and this is going a fun for walks. One. Yeah. If you've got your work wife or your work husband in the very platonic sense, a lot of, a lot of people will have their your work, work wife. Your work wife or your Yeah, work you've husband. got your buddy at work who's like, you know, your girlfriend or, you know, that you You're just. You're still not putting that out in a way that I think. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm talking platonic here. Yeah, okay. You know, totally innocent, like, you're just your best bud at work. Yeah. You know, you, people call them their work wives. Anyway, it's totally above board. But, you know, you might start saying, okay, every second week I'm going to make lunches for both of us and every se- second week you're going to make lunches for both of us. Yep. And it's a really effective way of getting every second week off. Okay. As long as you don't forget because then you're the most hated person in the office or you're shouting lunch. Yeah. But, you know. But I, I loved your buddy session before. One of the things you were talking about and we, we were talking about reducing sick days yes in that corporate world and that buddy system you had people doing the buddy lunches Mm -hmm. but you also had people like let's go for that five minute walk or 10 minute walk at lunch and getting people up and moving yeah it was actually really fun we did a talk over at tripodil and i actually the very next day i was in the area and i saw the oh you know the recommendation was let's try and go get five ten minute walk at lunchtime get some vitamin d get some steps up and they were actually doing it they you know you grab your group of people grab your pod for thinking yeah and you know and you can guarantee as an employer when your staff are outside in the sunshine and having a chat in their lunch break they're going to come back in a better mood more willing to work and if you're yeah. facilitating the ability to do that you're going to get people who are more excited to turn up little perks of the job are really what makes work satisfaction greater yeah. and i think it's something that needs to be i think a lot of people are doing it really well but i think there's a lot of more work to be done in terms of management and leadership actually modeling those behaviors it's just Generally speaking, has to be a top-down thing. You know, yeah. if your staff feel comfortable to be able to take that half hour, you know, lunch break to go do a walk because they see you doing it, it's not going to be one of those, yeah, we encourage people to go do this, but, you know, everyone's going to look at you like you're a slacker if you're doing it. Yeah. We need to recognize that the people who are doing those behaviors are actually more present, more engaged. They've got greater clarity in what they're doing and it gives their brain a little bit of a chance to check out for a bit so they can come back. They might That's do some so problem important solving. That's what you just said, then letting the brain check out for a bit. Absolutely. It's- if you look you know, at history, every sport has a half time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You need to re- regroup. You know, have a think about it. And I know that creative thinking and problem solving happens best with walking. You know, you think some of the best minds in the world. You know, composers, writers. You know, your Steve Jobs. Those people. They they went for long walks. I remember my dad when he was working on a case. He would be pacing back up and down, up and down. He'd go for long walks to think about stuff because it's a time to let the the information fall. But you're not sitting there staring at it. 
it. And so I, I don't think there should be any reason why people can't be utilising those. I mean, that's billable time as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> you know what the alternative is? People sit around a, a kitchen or something on their phones. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, that's doing jack or nothing for the corporate athlete. I mean, it's it's probably doing harm, if anything. Mm. If I'm sitting around in a, you know, in a bad mental state and then I go look at my social media. Some arseholes in Europe. And somebody's <laughs> just got hashtag blessed, then <laughs> I'm not going to be feeling great when I get back to my table. <laughs> so, you know, going out, getting into nature, getting some look sunshine. Up. Look up. Up, mm. put down some gratitude points, you know, that's going to be a better outcome for everybody involved. It's just about people getting comfortable enough to do it and it has to come from the top down. <laughs> Is um And look, we've got lots of people here that go walking at lunchtime. I think it's a great thing. I tend to work through but leave early. Yep. I want to get home to the family yep. instead of and working that's, seven that's o'clock. That's that's the way I run it. But, but you, Joel, our commercial manager here, he's out every day for a walk, and he's done. He's taking a lot more responsibility on the company, and it's really worked for him in managing himself. Yep, absolutely. And yeah. I, I know myself that I'm, you know, on the days when I'm thinking I should just skip the gym and you know go keep working through, are exactly the days where I'm better off taking some time out, getting that hit of endorphins, chatting to some friends at the gym, and my productivity and my happiness which you know shows in my work is greater the days when I decide to just you know knuckle down and keep going and pushing through when I know I should probably just listen to my state of being are the days when I just end up driving myself into the ground oh, I find a lot of people think they need to be busy busy and productive yeah, are two very different absolutely. things absolutely you know that one of the reasons I have a, a tribe that you know I send a text message out every day like training 615 because yep, garage sessions yeah. they're invaluable especially for blokes you know yeah it'd be good if you turned up once or twice Harriet brushed me last night it's okay I got over it but but it is a good thing for me because it means I leave the office, I change the mindset, yep. have a laugh, we talk five minutes of how wonderful our days were, what we're thankful for, and get in and lift some shit, you know, and at the end of it, feel good. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, I think we need to quit the false economy of, you know, hustle, busy, you know, there yeah. is a time and place for hard work, but you need to back that up. For every two pieces of work you do, you need one piece of rest. So absolutely. go, go, stop. Yeah, I like that. Go, go, stop. So, yeah. I mean, I think if we're going to wrap this up, what we need to focus in on a few key points of what are we looking at optimal performance for your athletes? Plan your food. Plan your food, plan your training, plan your stress, plan recover your from your stress, plan your snacks. Drink more water. Drink more water. Have some self-time. Have some self-time. Sleep properly. Sleep. If we are able to replicate some or all of those aspects into a corporate setting, we're going to get an employee, a manager, a leader who is better able to take on more and recover and go again without you know less of the burnout that we're seeing so i think it's definitely worthwhile reviewing you know your current practices and seeing if there aren't a few things in there that we've mentioned that you might be able to implement in order to become a corporate athlete greg yeah exactly i like it if anyone wants to talk to you about their corporate life they can talk to dietitian good person to talk to yeah absolutely yep. and there's probably a few people you need on your team with that but from the yep. dietary perspective definitely and we've got our body science corporate program up and running which is fantastic Fantastic. Yeah, we've had fun with that. Some of the uh, good people that I I personally have enjoyed to, I enjoy talking to you about because I'm really into, you know, I'm, I'm about having fun. So I'm about how do I maximize and hack that. And you've done great things there with me. Dr. Craig Duncan is another one. He's self-science. I mean, he's an incredible person to talk to in relation to starting your day, finishing your day, being good for yourself. You know, um, I've enjoyed the time with uh, Chris McClellan. Absolutely. Yeah, he's uh, super smart he and he is. talks research to me, but every now and then I need to hear the truth. That cortisol testing is uh, an absolute winner if you need some Yeah, feedback. he's done some good podcasts. Like that cortisol podcast is a big one to listen to that we've done. There's a lot of assets on our Body Science podcast. You should all subscribe to it. Like I never say that because I feel like a dickhead saying it, but you should really go out and subscribe to it because you know, and review it. Now, there's some really good tools out there. You know, we, we put together a, a concept called mybodyscience.com.au. It's a... Uh, the ethos was written by Harriet in relation to what we were trying to achieve. We got uh, Tatiana, a nutritionist, to come in and do a lot of the work in relation to putting that program together that you've had a look at, Harriet. Mm -hmm. and we're going to put a lot of knowledge on there for people. So, And this is a good opportunity now to remind everybody that they can subscribe to the podcast, they can rate it, they can review it, and that means that more people get to hear our good word. Greg? Yeah, like the fitness industry needs to stick together and drive forward. We're bigger than what we used to be. Like 20 years ago when we started, we were very much purely bodybuilding. A little bit of sport, driven heavily into sport. Now we're corporate athletes. Driving into corporate and everybody athletes. Everybody needs to hear this stuff. 
stuff. You know, if we all work together as an industry, we might actually see we get to enjoy our jobs for a bit longer. Yep. I love working in this industry, though. Fitter, happier, and healthier. Yeah, bring on fit, happy, healthy. Uh, Harry, thanks for coming on board. Anything you want to add to the end of this? Corporate athlete, like it's a new one. We haven't gone there before. I think this is a good start, and perhaps we will dive deeper into a couple of aspects of it later on. Yeah, we might dig deep on some people who are really pushing the barriers on corporate health and wellness, too, and have get them in for a chat. Yep, absolutely. Body Science Podcast is over. Catch ya. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.